Hi and welcome to a new episode. As you can see I've got a Raspberry Pi booted up and I've got my Commodore 64 open showing off the Ultimate 64 motherboard. Now I'm not really showing off the Ultimate 64 motherboard, it's because the CPLD needs to be upgraded. Now I'm not too sure what a CPLD is, but um, from the Ultimate uh, forum on Facebook, the 1541 Ultimate uh, grouping on Facebook, if you search that and find CPLD, you'll find this, this document. I'll just make it uh, so you can see it. This document, it's two-sided, and it explains to you how to get going um, and do this CPLD. I've, this is the first time I'm doing it myself. I'm just wanting to show it from a noob's point of view where I understand a fair bit about how to connect things up but how to program them what they're actually doing no I have no clue I fully admit that every time this document that's been uh, made it's not by my by me um, or how to do it or the programming for it it's nothing to do with me it's to all the geniuses on the Facebook group that know how to do such a thing now the CPLD needs to be upgraded if you have a serial number going up to 540. I'm not too sure if that includes 540, but I don't see where it would do much harm if you if it doesn't need to be done and you do it for your 540. But at the same time, I would confirm on that forum group and that thread and make sure. But if your serial number is past 540, well, you can watch this video out of interest, but there's no need for you to be doing it. Now, as you may notice with the Raspberry Pi, I've already got it set up. Um, and at the bottom left there, you should be able to see where it says my IP address is. In my case, it's 192.168.0.17. Now, yours may well be different, probably will be. But take note of that IP number. You're going to need it later because the one thing I'm going to do a little bit different than what the instructions tell you to do I'm wanting to telnet in from my main computer so that the commands that are in that document, what I have done, I've cut them and pasted them into Notepad and then I'm going to cut and paste them from Notepad into uh, the telnet session that I'll have, I'll, I will have open. So, But the first thing we need to do is to get the Raspberry Pi working with telnet because it doesn't do it um, straight away. As you may notice, I've got the or you will notice rather, I've got the command line uh, up and going because it says in the document that you should use the stretch light version of the uh, Raspbian um, operating system. And it says in the document that the the login name is pi, P-I, which may well help if I turn my wireless keyboard on, pi, and then the password is raspberry, and then it goes in and that's it, you've logged in now. And at the bottom there you can see that it says Ras uh, use raspberry-config to set your country beforehand. In my case I don't really need to set it to that, but if you've got a non-English keyboard, as in it's not a QWERTY keyboard, you might want to make sure that um, your keyboard is set up the correct way so that when you are typing, if you want to miss out the telnet bit and just typing in, um, you're hitting the correct keys. Um, but to get this going, you type in sudo raspberry-config. From what I understand, su uh, sudo makes it that you are the administrator for each of these commands. So you're sort of like popping in and out being the administrator. Anyway, let's get this up there. Um, so if you want to change your keyboard, you'd want to go into there, I believe. Yes, you can change your uh, location, your time zone, your keyboard, or your Wi-Fi country. I'm not going to need to do that just now because I'm in the UK, so it's uh, even if it's an American keyboard, really think the only thing I've got to worry about is that the at symbol and the quotes are the one the wrong way round, for me at least. Um, what I want to do though is turn on the telnetting way of doing things 
and to do that you go to this SSH select that and say yes you want it to be turned on and then just for the sake of it I'm going to update the Raspberry Pi as well just to make sure that it's got the latest uh, updates for the operating system I'm going to let this all run through at real time so that you've got a rough idea on how long it should take. Now I'm doing this for the very first time myself so there may be some little delays I'm hoping it's not too boring if there's some little delays but I wanted to make sure I get everything correct because the last thing I want to do is go and update this and fry my machine in some way. Now of course if you are following this guide or you want to follow the document guide directly it's on your own head be it. If it fails and it does fry your board in some way well sadly it's tough luck don't come and come and crying to me about it because I can't even tell you how to fix it anyway and it is warned on the document that uh, it's up to you to give it a go now since I'm unlikely to get any kind of um, blackouts or brownouts with my electricity I should be okay as long as I don't yank on some cable and every command I type in is the correct command and the connection that I make from the Raspberry Pi to the Commodore 64 Ultimate 64 motherboard um, it should be all fine. Now anyway the Raspberry Pi software or operating system is now updated so I'm going to uh, select finish and now we're now at the prompt again so what I'm going to do now is on my Windows computer I'm going to load up putty And as you can see now that my puppy session has uh, slid into effect and now I can put down my keyboard that's connected to my Raspberry Pi I don't need that right now I can cut and paste directly um, from the, the notepad file that I have because from that document what I have done is cut and pasted the commands and put them into notepad so that I can copy them from notepad directly into the telnet session so here I am logging into the telnet session again or oh, the first time I suppose and there you can see I've logged in now off to the side that you're not getting to see but I have a notepad open with the different commands and you'll see them getting cut and pasted one by one so I'm just using control C clicking on the putty window that I have open right clicking and then it's thrown in that whole command there. Now you see I've got no problems of typing the wrong thing and hopefully this will actually be quicker than me typing it bit by bit anyway. When I've uh, clicked the right button and put the command in I need to press enter so that the operating system actually starts doing it. So that's the first line done. See, even here I've made a mistake. There should be a space in between the T and the slash exec. There we go, that command's now been done. So 
So watch out for that when you're cutting and pasting. Make sure that you have got a space between the, it says pseudo TEE. -E. Make sure there's a space after that. And then it says slash, etc. That might have been noticeable by someone who actually knows Linux, but I, I missed it, even though I do know a little bit, but even I still missed that one because I was cutting and pasting. And even if I was typing, I think I would have just carried on typing. I think that in the document could do with being shifted so that you don't, so you do actually see that there's a space in between there for people that don't know Linux. So obviously downloading some files from the internet now. I'm saying yes to this because obviously I need it to do whatever it's supposed to be doing. I'm guessing now the update that I did at the very beginning wasn't really needed because it will get updated now. But that step at the beginning, I, I like to do that anyway for when I've been doing other projects for Raspberry Pis. As I say, I don't really know everything about Raspberry Pis because I don't, but I've been messing around and trying to create a um, f an electronic photo frame by using a Raspberry Pi. The little bit I know of Linux is from many years ago of where I was uni using Unix, but I've long since forgotten all the commands for that because it's been a very long time since. So as you can see, this takes a little time grabbing all the information, or all the data rather. Well, it's still doing that. I'm hoping that this new microphone makes my voice sound a lot better than it did in the other microphone that I had. And there we go, it's finished uh, doing that part. So one more command to cut, cut and paste at the moment is to get yet more data from the internet. Actually, no, it seems to be that it's going to install something it's downloaded. I'm saying yes to this command as well. Oh, it is getting data from the internet. As I say, I'm still learning myself. Now in the instructions, it now says that you've done this part, you should turn the Raspberry Pi off. And by doing that, you do it with this command. And there we go, now the putty session is closed. And as you can see, all you've got now is a black screen because the Telnet session is closed and the Raspberry Pi is in fact turned itself off. But at the same time, I now need to kill the power to it. So I'm just gonna reach across and do that. Now 
we'll bring up this to being the bigger screen now for the so you can see what's happening here. I'm just gonna move my keyboard out of the way. And bring in these instructions again. Now here it says to put the sudo halt command in and then it says well the raspberry is switched off please wire the raspberry pi uh, gpios to the jtag connector on the u64 board find the jtag connector located beside the keyboard connector now there's the keyboard connector so that must be the jtag it's talking about not this one over here this one and then it gives you the pinouts for both of the the Pi and the JTAG socket and then it tells you which one is supposed to go where. As you can see on the Raspberry Pi I've actually already wired it up. So it starts at pin 7 uh, and then you've got 9, 11, 13 and 15 so basically find pin 7 and then follow it down until you've got all of them done. And then it explains that pin 7 should go to pin 5 on the U64 and pin 5 is the one that is right next to the gap in the main connector on there so pin 7 in my case is the green wire so I'll connect that now and try to get it quite squared up because obviously you're going to end up with other ones next to it pin 9 which for me is the yellow wire and that needs to go to pin 2 which is at the top right I don't like how this board is flexing so I'm going to try supporting it with my finger as I'm doing it the next wire along for me is the orange one and that needs to go to pin 1 which is the top left it's quite fiddly when you can't really see what you're doing past the microphones and things there we go the next one for me is the red wire which is from pin 13 and that needs to go to pin 3 so that's in between the two that we've already done I think they could have numbered this a, a little bit easier for this side of things is what I was meaning about trying to get it to square up a bit because it will be easier in fact what I'm going to do is disconnect the first one it said to do there we go that's a lot easier to do just making sure that it's in the right place and then for me the final wire is the brown one which is from pin 15 on the Pi to pin 9 on the Commodore or the U64, and that's all the way at the bottom left. So make sure I get that one. All right. So to just double check, I've got seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, and fifteen on the Pi. The green wire should go to pin five. The yellow wire should go to pin two. The orange wire should go to pin 1, the red wire should go to pin 3, and the brown wire should go to pin 9. That's obviously just by the colouring of the cable that I've got, but I recommend that you get these um, female to female cables. These are the 30 centimeter long ones. Um, I recommend you get that length because it gives you a bit of play to do it. Now it says you need to power up the Raspberry Pi and the U64 board. So let me find my power cable. I'll move things out of the way just a little bit so that I can reach. I'm trying to make sure I don't yank wires out and everything. Alright, so that's got its power in I'm going to turn the Raspberry Pi back on again the Raspberry Pi 
is booting up and you should be able to see that now. I'll wait for it to boot up completely before I turn the Commodore 64 on. I don't need a display out for the Commodore 64 because it has LEDs on it and it boots up basically instantly so there's no worry there I don't think. So the Raspberry Pi is booted up. Turn the U64 on and then we have a nice little red light. Just wait for a few seconds just to make doubly sure. There, everything seems to be turned on properly. So I'm going to load up Putty yet again. Making sure that I go into the uh, correct IP number. And so we've got Putty yet again. So I log in with Pi and the password being Raspberry. And there we go, we've logged in. So now this is the really interesting part of I really don't want things to go wrong. So it says that this next command, it says to make sure that it's recognized. So this command and cut and pasting. Obviously I'm not cut and pasting the right thing, so I'll try again. There we go. And it's showing that it has uh, a connection there. So I need this next command of where it will actually copy it, it will actually update the U64 CPLD. So as you can see that's quite a fancy long line of command and this is the bit where I didn't want to get wrong. So I'm double checking that I have in fact cut and paste the whole thing. And it matches what it says on the document. It's telling me it can't find the file. So, see, things can be quite scary. So what I'm going to do now is copy the file across to a USB stick and then follow the commands and what it says on how to mount a USB stick. So bear with me. So I've copied the file across to a USB stick. I'm just going to move this across now to the Raspberry Pi. I had copied the file to the SD card. I know I did because I doubly made sure that I had. So I don't know why it's not picking it up from there. But now it says I have to do some other commands. So just 
bear with me as I cut and paste those commands. Get this piece of paper out of the way. Just loading up the PDF file again. And I'm cutting and pasting the commands into Notepad so that I know I've got the correct ones. Right, sorry for that little bit of delay, but as you can see, even when you think you've got things correct, you can make little mistakes. So hopefully you're learning from my mistakes, or at least the quirks that I'm coming across as well as. So these two commands should mount a USB thumb drive or USB stick, whatever you want to call them. And then it gives you a different command on how to uh, copy the, the, uh, the coding for this CPLD chip. Because obviously you want to get it from the USB stick now. And there we are, we're programming it. And that's it, done. So, fingers crossed that I unplug all of this now and stick the Commodore 64 on. What I'm going to do is turn the Raspberry Pi off and I'm going to turn the Commodore 64 off and then I'm going to uh, stick the keyboard back in while you're watching and then I'll uh, transfer the HDMI cable from the Raspberry Pi into the back of the Ultimate 64, the resolution will be a little bit wrong because obviously I've been capturing from a Raspberry Pi, but at least we get to see that does the Commodore 64 or Ultimate 64 boot up. So while I'm doing this, I will turn off the, will close down the uh, Raspberry Pi by putting that sudo alt command. So that's it, it's now turned off. Kill the power to the Pi, and I'll unplug, I'll press and hold the power button on the Commodore 64, and that's it, it's turned off. I'll just pull the power on it as well to make sure. I'll unplug all these pins, there we go. Unplug the HDMI and slide that over. Which one's the HDMI port? There we go. That one, of course, it is. Right, and then I'll stick this bracket back in again. quite silly haven't I because the one thing I need to do because of the way this disc bracket is designed I need to get the oh I had to drop that on the floor didn't I let's get this keyboard back in again that's that in Let's try to find this drop bit of 3D printed bracket. 
any clicking you can hear is my fancy chair I probably could do with replacing right there we go that's in there I'm just going to rest it for now I'm not going to fully assemble it all you don't need to see me do that right so the keyboard's back in there's a HDMI signal well, it will be in a minute. Put that back in, turn the power back on. Moment of truth. I need to I've turned it on, but the way that OBS works, even though I've got it on, I need to disable the capture and then redo it again. And there we go. Commodore 64, Ultimate 64, with its CPLD updated, and everything still, still seems to be working. So, I hope you found that of some interest. Please watch out for the quirks and mistakes that I made. Um, I, do, I know for 100% fact that I copied the file across to the SD card, but for whatever reason it didn't take it. Um, maybe it just doesn't work that way. Maybe I've misunderstood something with that. But I've copied across to a USB stick and then I've flashed it into the uh, Ultimate 64 and I don't seem to have broken anything. So there we go. I really do hope that you found it interesting and please like, subscribe, press that bell, tell your family and friends. And the next computer that I want to show off is the Amstrad 6128 Plus. It's had a few changes done to it as Doc Brown would uh, say. So until next time, happy gaming.